Welcome back to 5-Minute Knives, the channel created by a man who identifies as a man. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Honey Badger. Honey Badger knives sent in by a subscriber of ours, and we're going to take a look at them. But first, let's pay a bill. And we're back. Okay, so hopefully you guys uh, ordered roughly one million sheaths after seeing that. I hope so. Anyway, these knives were sent in by a subscriber of ours. Shout out to Josh Wright. Thank you so much for sending these in. Uh, I'm finally getting around to the video, and I will get these right back to you, bud. He sent in these Honey Badger knives. We're going to take a look at them. They're all very similar. Uh, they're fairly budget-minded. These aren't too costly. Now, these knives come in uh, two different varieties of steel. 8 CRMOV something is like kind of like the budget line. And uh, for the midsize, they run about like less than 40 bucks on Knife Center, I saw. These all seem to be D2, and they run between like, I don't know, high, high 50s. High 50s, 57, 58 bucks, something like that. So here's the knives. You've seen them in the unboxing of our second mail room, but I wanted to devote a little more time to really giving them a good look-see. And here's one in the blue FRN handles. He did change the backspacers somehow. I don't know where you get those. And this is in 8CR13 MOV steel. So this would be like your, um, you know, less co costly variety. These run about like 40 bucks. Now, whatever you think about the steel guys, in this geometry of the Karambit style, it really doesn't matter what steel it is. This is going to be uh, pretty effective just based on its geometry and shape alone. The grinds, the angles, you know. You guys are familiar with karambits. All the inertia, all the, uh, the power of the cut goes to the very tip, which is a novel idea rather than a sweeping belly where you're cutting material the whole way. You know, this is like tip hits first with all the power. So... Really, whatever steel you have is going to do the job. Deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws. I love that. This is the small guy. This is like a 3-inch variety. And again, a little bit small for my hands, but this wouldn't be bad to carry. Lock bar functions pretty well. And uh, centered. Take note, Fox. So a little bit of a wrist flick. And she's out pretty good there. Let's take a look at another one. This is the mid-size one. This was my favorite, the Goldilocks size, if you ask me. And this is in D2 steel, which I would prefer out of the two. Serrations. Nasty, nasty serrations. Black FRN handles with a blue liner he added. And again, that deep pocket clip. This is going to be a quick video, guys, because we already took a look at these, and I'm just going to let you know what I think of them as we go. And then here's the big guy. This is like a 4-inch variety, it looks like. Whoop, there we go. A honker sort of reminds me with like the blade weight all being forward, kind of like the Manix 2 XL, the Manix 2, the bigger of the Manix uh, Spyderco knives. It just had like a chunky blade coming out. This feels the same way as it comes out, although this is a flipper design. And even without a little wrist flick, I can get it out just fine. The lock bar seems to work just fine. And the added weight of the blade really does help it kind of shut. So if you're looking for, you know, mainly one hand operation, I'd say the larger one actually seems to be a little more friendly to that. Let me see. No, this is fine too. They're all pretty cool. The action seems not sluggish, but you know, they get out there, you know? So this one fits my medium large hands just perfectly. This was my Goldilocks size of the three. And uh, I do think these are cool. I think they're neat. I'm interested in them. They're funky. For the price, why not give them a shot? Uh, this larger one feels a little, you know, the lock bar kind of juts out a little farther, and you do feel that in the grip. You do feel that in the grip a little bit. There is a bit of a working choil here that's uh, somewhat jimped, leading right to the blade, but there's really nothing stopping you there. So this would just be for your pull cuts. I wouldn't really recommend sticking with it. Now, you guys let me know in the comments, what would you use these for? What's your application for something like this? Uh, a karambit style with, the, you know, really intense serrations. Now, with the larger one, I'm not so sure. Maybe you work on a boat 
Maybe you're a lobster fisherman, right? Then again, D2 is not going to really like that. Uh, oh, this is the 8CR 13 MOV. Eh. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I just don't think that that steel is going to hold the edge, even on the serrations if you're cutting rope. I think this will get dull pretty quickly. Uh, aside from, like, the obvious self-defense application, what's the POU for this? What would you use these for? I guess I'm making this video not so much reporting anything to you guys, but more just asking you what you think of them. You know, slightly different this time. I mean, I think they're cool. Don't get me wrong, it's neat. But at the same time, I don't know what I would use them for. That's the thing. I mean, Josh sent them in so I can take a look, which is pretty cool. And thank you so much, bud. Guys, send in your knives that you want to hear my thoughts on. I wish I had some more commentary for you on these. Out of the three, I would go with the midsize ones. The FRN is okay, but I can feel a little bit of flex. Not bad. Not bad. They just are a little slippery. Like, my hands are almost like a little sweaty right now. And I feel myself kind of, as I handle these, I feel myself sort of readjusting my grip. And I don't know. They're all right. The clip seems to have a little bit of wobble. Not bad. I really like that they inset the screws for the most part. They're sticking out just a hair. But that's not going to impact your pocket. I like the looks of these. I like the price of them. Um, the action's fine. It works. You know, I'm not blown away, but I'm not disappointed. It's okay. I really like that they're both centered. All three seem to be centered fairly well. And they're big blades in this kind of smaller, thinner handle. So, you know, they better... Oh, this one's not quite as centered, but it's not touching. It's not impacting... Uh, yeah, it's just off just a little bit to this side. At that price point, I sort of expect something like that. And this little guy's pretty cute. You know, if I may use the word. And this is slightly off-center as well. So, you know, I'm a stickler for centering. They're all kind of like to and fro. But, you know, they're they're inexpensive knives. They'd be good for, I believe, a self-defense application. That being said, the handles are a little slick for something like that. You really got to get a good grip on these suckers. So, for me, karambit-wise, as much as I can't stand Fox and they're really poor quality control... An attitude, I guess. Um, I don't know. I would stick with my Fox 599 because I have a good grip on it. It's got the Emerson Wave on the back, so it just comes out immediately. I probably should have gotten it for this video, but reference that video. You'll see what I'm talking about. Fox 599 Karambit. That's my go-to for self-defense carry. It has a ring on the back on the end. I, I just I can't recommend it enough. As long as you can find one that's functioning and is centered, it's a keeper. But you're going to... You're going to buy eight and get four decent ones. Uh, also, oh, one one last thing here. On the flipper tab, it is jimped a little bit, as you can see, but it's a little smooth right there, and I find my finger slipping a little bit. So, Joshua Wright, thank you so much for sending these in. My official verdict on these would be, you know, to pass for me. I'm not really thrilled with the steel choices. And a um, little slippery on the flipper little slippery on the FRN handles, although they are textured with this kind of honeycomb pattern. It doesn't really grip like you want it to. Also, uh, the lock bar kind of sticks out, which is actually really nice for getting to it. And I really like that the flipper tab stops on your thumb. That's a safety measure that some companies don't get right. I've had a couple of cheaper knives that don't do that, and you can just shut it right on your finger. So this is cool. I think it's a cool design. I'm not crapping on a subscriber's choice of knives. I think they're fine. And you seem like a really nice person, Josh. That being said, I don't know. I just don't feel like a, like this has some wiggle. Mm. Aside from the pop of color you added with these, I just don't know if these are karambits I would trust for anything serious. I think they're more like, you know, if you're a collector and, and you want to round out your collection. Plus, I really do like the really intense serrations that they have on these guys. That's kind of cool, too. Out of all of them, I would go with the mid-size one if I had to. That being said, I don't know. It doesn't, they don't feel really substantial in my hand. You guys let me know what you think. If you've had experience with the Honey Badger Karambits, I don't know about the rest of, the, of their line. I don't really follow that company, so I don't know much about them. I would say that with a little bit of a wrist flick, they come out with some great authority. Uh, it's a it's a pleasing design. I really like the the geometry of the thumb ramp, especially on this mid-size one. This just feels perfect in my hand. That being said, with my almost sweaty hands right now, 
I can feel this thing kind of, see? Like, kind of like that in my hand. Like, I can feel it doing stuff like that when I'm, you know, and I got the mitts, right? You know, I can get a hold of this thing, don't get me wrong, but I'd want to keep my thumb there. I wouldn't want to do this because I have a feeling that in use, you're going to get some rocking. And who knows where this knife's going to wind up? Probably on the ground. And uh, probably your potato that you're attacking is probably going to pick it up and uh, use it on you. And then he'll have the same problem. <laughs> so anyway, I just think these are cool looking. But for me, that's as far as it goes, buddy. You wanted my opinion. This is it. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys about it. And by the way, when I do like stuff for companies, like I did something, I'm not going to even name the company right now. I did a video for them and I asked you guys what you thought about them. And somebody said, I think they're junk. I think their stuff is crap. It's overpriced. Well, great. That's why I ask you guys. I'm not saying go buy it. I'm saying, you know, what do you think? And if a company's going to send me something, yeah, I got content to make. I'm going to make the video, you know, rather than like, you know, keeping free stuff is cool and all, but if I'm not going to use it, then I'm not that excited. I'm more excited to get another video out that covers a different topic. Does that make sense? I'm always looking for content. I leave it up to you guys to decide. If I have an opinion on something, I'll tell you. These guys I would pass on. I'll tell you that right now. So if that helps you, that helps you. I hope so. If not, you're a collector and you think they're funky and cool and you got the extra, you know, 50 beans laying around. I would get the, the crappier steel. They're cheaper and you get to play with them. And uh, this would be like a tremendous like letter opener. You know, it's just a little wide in the pocket, right? So Josh, sound off. Let me know what you use them for. Other than collecting, you seem to be a collector, which is cool. And that's totally a valid POU, by the way. So if there's things that you like that are pleasing to your eye, I really like the way this is done, then pick it up. Who am I to tell you what to buy? That being said, would I buy the Honey Badger Karambits? No, no, I wouldn't. So that's my two cents. The next video, guys, I'm going to have my very first knife maker's corner. So you knife makers out there, you can send me examples of your work. I will highlight your work and I will put your website out there for my guys to go and check out. And uh, if it helps your business, great. If not, at least we'll just highlight your knives with an evergreen ad. You can just get a tablet and put it on your table and uh, show my video and it'll, we'll just make everything look really nice for you. But I'm really interested in knife makers sending me their stuff and I will do a knife maker spotlight be on the lookout next week for Knife Maker Spotlight number uno. And I'm really excited about this guy. He's local. I love his work. He's got a lot of love into everything he does. And he's sort of like me. He's a bit of a perfectionist. As you guys know, um, you know, like with my sheaths and stuff, I'm a bit of a perfectionist as well. I mean, this is just a Cold Steel Recon Tonto. You've seen it a million times. That being said, the sheath really hooks it up and makes this a very fun piece to own and a fine potato digger, if I may say so myself. So that's it for me. Uh, we ran about 13 minutes. I think that's plenty. And I'll see you guys next time on 5-Minute Knives.